And indeed, it was a long wait for prospective students of the Ghana School of Law today after it emerged that their entrance examination papers reportedly leaked and had to be rescheduled. Well, joining sources are indicating that the General Legal Council was forced to abort the process after it discovered that the questions uh, put forward by the Independent Committee on Examinations flooded social media. So what more are we learning about the leakage of the entrance examination papers. Joining me via Zoom now is Joseph Akable, is our court correspondent, also monitoring uh, issues relating to this leakage uh, for us. Uh, these are reports, but uh, Joseph, first of all, have we confirmed if indeed there was a leakage and what's happening to the papers now? Are they being written? So first on what is happening now, now the, the race shadow paper was to commence at 1.30 and from what we understand was supposed to last about an, an hour and a half. And so um, from what we are picking up, it will mean that they should be wrapping up by now. But in terms of the information regarding the leakage, I mean, what we do know is that, I mean, uh, this morning and um, I mean, late last night, there were some questions that were on social media and uh, they came with answers in some instances as well. And so, I mean, not long after uh, the news came in and indeed there was a notice that was put out by the independent examination council that administers this particular exams informing students that the exam had been rescheduled from the 10 a.m to the 1 30. and so we've not seen or cited an official communication from the independent examination committee blaming it specifically on a leakage but we have seen those questions that have gone on and what we understand from persons who are close to this particular event is that it's as a result of the leakage that is what resulted in that set of questions that should have been written by the students at 10 a.m. being withdrawn for fresh questions to be handed them at 1.30. And so um, it's an issue that came as a lot of, as an issue of concern for a lot of the students, uh, particularly because uh, some of them, I mean, they are prepared, were prepared to go into the exam hall at 10 a.m. Then you now have to uh, go back and prepare and come back at 1.30 uh, a.m. for, I mean, what you do not know and obviously, it's worrying for right. them as well. And, and how usual or otherwise is this um, issue of the rescheduling of papers or cancellation, outright one as we're seeing by the General Legal Council? When last did we witness a, a similar incident? I think the one that readily comes to mind, if, if, I, if I recall correctly, should be in 2018. And there, there was a similar concern, but this is not the first time that this issue has come up, even in terms of the professional program itself at the Ghana School of Law, there is often also this problem of the exam leaking, and in some instances, you don't have uh, the papers being being I mean cancelled for students. I mean, I remember, I think the 2018 one specifically, the entrance examination, there was a situation where uh, students had to take a supplementary exam as well, and so this is not the first time that this particular uh, incident has happened, and it's, it's among the litany of criticisms that people tend to raise against the work that is being done by the Independent Examination Council. Uh, and we must state that the entrance exam is very much dreaded by students who want to go in for their professional training. Uh, having learnt of that news that it may be rescheduled or outrightly cancelled uh, for another set of questions to come up, I'm just wondering what may be going through the minds of a lot of students. I mean, those that I engaged, I mean, once the news came out, it was that of worry, and especially uh, because of the fact that they were preparing. Not necessarily those are interacted with are not people who, I mean, at least what they, they tell us, are not people who had access to this particular set of questions that went viral. Mm. But the argument is that, I mean, and, and what I kept asking them was, that, are these questions that they could even answer? They said, well, these are questions that we could perhaps have answered some of them. And then they, they now have to prepare again a couple of hours, the anxiety, I mean, you, you are praying, you are going through your final preparations to go in and you are told that, okay, you have to come back at 1.30. And so another set of preparations again, you do not know whether for what you've seen on social media, which in your opinion, maybe you can answer some of them, mm. whether the one that you presented eventually is of the nature that you can answer the same quantity of them in order to secure the necessary uh, pass. Okay, and for, the sake, and, and for the sake of those who may not have been on social media, give us a sense of how bad or otherwise the situation was online. Having seen all, some of these papers flood the um, space, and did they even come with answers? Because uh, th there are some reports even indicating 
uh, to us that indeed the answers were provided to some of the questions. So for some people, that's how bad the situation was. So for some of the, the questions that went round, I mean, they, they came with another a PDF document that um, had the answers provided. They are not answers in the strict sense of, I mean, what exactly you should produce, more or less like uh, an examiner's guide, if right. I put it that way. So it gives you a sense of uh, the issues of law that the examiner expects you to raise, the relevant cases are indicated, and what you should be addressing by way of your analysis and your conclusion as well. So it, it's a skeletal makeup, which, I mean, if anyone has access to, it could form the basis of a person putting up a very good performance. And, I mean, what, what we need to understand for this particular year's exams is that, unlike the previous year, this time around, they indicated that they will determine the pass mark. You, you recall what happened with the 499 instance, uh, and where the people and the students had, had made a point that, I mean, in past years, the understanding was that the pass mark was getting more than at least 50 or more. So they, that was what the understanding they went into the exam with. And so this time around, the committee indicated that going into the exam, they would determine the pass mark. And so mm. students who are writing as we speak now do not even know what the pass mark will be. And so it's a bit more dicey this year than even the previous year. So uh, when, when you have been writing, you can't even do your computation and say, oh, okay, maybe I right. have more than half. And so and, I know and, that and, and, and finally, Blay, any word from management of the Ghana School of Law, at least on what we've um, reported? No. In fact, the only notice that came out was specifically directed at the students, indicating that the pardon ratio to one thirty p.m. Anyway, I uh, would have to leave it here for now. Joseva Kable, our court correspondent. Let me bring in at this moment uh, Ni Ama, uh, who happens to be a lawyer and also a member of the uh, Center for Social Justice. Uh, Hassan Asari is president uh, for the National Association of Law Students. In fact, they are condemning uh, the, uh, what we've witnessed uh, in, in terms of the exam questions flooding social media. Uh, so probably it's a time now to revisit that post on Facebook and to try as much as possible to get contents of uh, what it is that the National Association of Law Students uh, have just uh, indicated on this matter. It reads that uh, we have taken notice of the social media circulation or leakage uh, of questions allegedly intended for the 2022-2023 Ghana School of Law entrance examination originally scheduled for 10 a.m. today, uh, Friday, uh, the 23rd of September 2022, and we wish to state as follows. Um, first of all, uh, we condemn in no uncertain terms this uh, occurrence. Uh, we're calling on the security agencies to immediately investigate with a view to bring persons associated uh, with same to book. And then there's a third point uh, that this is not the first time this has happened. In 2018, the entrance examination questions leaked and resulted uh, in the supplementary exams uh, two weeks after the examination was written. Uh, and then in July 2022, the civil procedure paper um, of professional law course was leaked as well. That's today's leakage um, two months after the July's paper or leakage makes this development uh, not an isolated case. These occurrences are an indictment on the independence of the uh, examination committee, which is the IEC, and by extension, the General Legal Council. Uh, it actually gives a picture of the inability um, to handle legal education, which unfortunately they continue to be in charge of. And leakages of examination questions is a proof that people are desperate when, of course, some have to use any means possible to succeed and it is clear that such a system will only favor those that have the means and are closer to persons with access. So the statement goes on and on but uh, it's uh, a good time to bring the two gentlemen in now. I'll start off with you Hassan Asari since that comment was uh, posted uh, by your association and then we'll get the thoughts of Niyama. So uh, when you say uh, that um, you, you want action in terms of investigations are you expecting that there will be anybody beyond the General Legal Council to prove this? Um, thank you for the opportunity, but I hope so. Unfortunately, I tried to dig to see if there was any investigations when the 2018 one occurred. I did not find anything to read or anything to confirm that it so happened. But I think as I have chrono chronologically stated, 2018 it happened, July it happened, and it just happened. It calls for concern. And I think reasonably, anybody would want to know what is going on. 
And for me, I think it has to be investigated, and I hope they do. Uh, you're still blaming the system uh, in the, the statement that was just released. It appears that you have a sense uh, that the law school examination is still not a fair process in terms of uh, selecting students for the professional course. Yes, and I still stand by it. The, this particular exam, I have said, is not transparent. It is opaque. It is not a fair process, and students would unjustly be denied. The structure lends itself to abuse, and it does not test on merit. I don't call it examination. It is a selection. Because I'm going to write an exam. I don't know the pass mark. I cannot see the mass script. I cannot see the marking scheme. I cannot request for retelling, and I must accept without question. That is the English that kills me all the more. Accept without question. And we are talking of law. So for me, I don't think it is transparent. If I had 73 and you gave me 37, I'd have to live with it, even though it's your fault. And I have always said, it is a human institution. And this is a proof of the statement I keep saying. It is a human institution and mistakes are inevitable. So if people feel you are not being fair to them, they will use any means they, they, can, they can have to actually find a way to go through. And unfortunately, that is what we are envisaging now. Yes, they'll pay anything. What I've not been able to establish is whether people were paid to give the results out or it was through negligence. I can't really say. And that is why I would what I What are your findings pointing to? I'm sure that initially, uh, when it came on social media, you had done some checks about what was going on. In fact, to the extent that the examiner's guide is on social media. That's how flawed the process seems to, to be. We're not sure if that's the exact reason for, for which the papers are being rescheduled. Um, but what's your check revealing to you in terms of the investigations that you've done initially? Um, I, I think it is obvious that if indeed they move the exam from 10 o'clock to 1 p 1.30 p.m. as I confirm from the students, then something may have happened which should not be out of the usual. Now, what even woke me up this morning was a number of calls I saw on my phone. I spoke with some of them who wanted me to organize a boycott. I told them it's too late because I had requested for that and unfortunately it didn't happen. The problem is they felt psychologically they weren't prepared or they would not be prepared. They felt if I could find a way to speak to anybody, but GLC never speaks. That's the problem. You can raise anything, they will never speak to you. And that is what difficulty some of us get when we have to even ascertain information. I don't think it should always be about the RTI or the right to information bill. If we can speak to some of these issues, which is affecting Ghanaian students, we think they should be willing to open up for us to contribute or come to a consensus of some sort to find a, a, one solution once and for all. And I believe that, I have always said, I think the problem is they just do not want to open legal education. If that thing happens, some of these things would not happen. Okay, which we'll, is come, to say, we'll come to the diagnosis of the problem. Uh, Niyama, you have also been monitoring this. How do we uh, move forward in, in terms of ensuring justice? Uh, I'm not sure if uh, any of the students have been of course, oppressed in the process, or uh, the, the, the General Legal Council, we cannot establish now uh, to say, well, they've been unfair to the students simply because of the examination leakage, because they've not given that clear indication that, well, we are rescheduling simply because of the papers on social media. So uh, from your perspective as the uh, Center for Social Justice, what do you make of all of these um, papers that have gone online and uh, delays in the examination? Good. Um, uh, good evening to your uh, listeners uh, and our viewers. Uh, it's, it's, it's not a good one at all, because specifically when this is not the first time it's happening, I mean, you can squarely put the blame at the doorstep of the organizers of the examination. As much as we do not condone or support any examination malpractice, the managers of the examination would have to ensure that whatever they have to put in place for such acts not to happen, they have to do it. And specifically, when this is not the first time, it tells you that somebody is not doing his or her work well. And you can tell the psychological trauma that it puts people into. I mean, I've taught in the university for 10 years. 
And I can say that when you set examination questions, you don't set only one. So if they've done their due diligence and have seen what has leaked, then it is up to them to bring an alternative paper without altering the time. But to change time and not speaking and saying that the time has been changed from this time to that time, it is a problem for us. Do you have a sense, you that, do you, do you have a sense that this may affect the quality or the integrity of the examination process? Sure, we would have everything to blame because as far as things have not gone the smooth way, I mean, for, for me as a lawyer who practices in another jurisdiction and a member of the International Bar Association, I've had friends calling me because they read a thing and they told me, Ni, is this not the things that you've been talking about? Because I wrote copiously and I've published a book, The Crucifixion of LI 1296, which concerns legal education in Ghana. I've pointed out what we should not do. And the big question is, what, what, what is it if all Ghanaians want to become lawyers? Okay. So let's is get it not to... a thing that is going to serve us better? Let, let's okay? get, let, let's... The problem is simply a problem of space. If we, have visual, if we have the vision to know that we're developing a country where population will grow, organizations will come up, institutions will come up. I mean, regions are even going to come up where we will need lawyers in every nook and cranny of the society. Then we should have expanded. But this tells you that we are not vicious enough. Mm. We do not see that future. And the future is with us here today, and we're trying to, through unjustifiable means, cut people off. I mean, for an examination that less than 10 percent of entrance pass, it's a problem. And it's a worry yeah. for the country. So, so let's get you to see? it then. Let's get to it then, because it appears that, and just as we're learning from the National Association of Law Students, this is not the first time this is happening. 2018, the point back to some years as well, uh, where we've recorded all of these um, infractions, if you want to call them as such. How do we solve the problem? And for instance, how did you diagnose the problem in this uh, book that you're talking about? I mean, well, I, I've, I've given various uh, 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 solutions to the problem. One, if I, to answer your question straight, those who manage the examination, if there is a leakage, it comes from those who manage it. You can't blame any student whatsoever. Because the students do not set the exams. They do not have custody of the examination question. So if the question comes up, it is the blame of the managers of the examination. They have to be blamed and they have to accept that blame and they must be punished for it. So that is what the law prescribed. They have to be punished for it, for being negligent on their work and allowing those things to go out. Or it means that there are certain actors in the chain that cannot be trusted. And that, is, that you cannot blame any student for. Why will these things happen? It's a matter of space. If you have a huge inlet and a small outlet, this is what happens. I mean, you have thousands of entrants and you have hundreds to be taken. Definitely people are going to scramble and find ways to get into the admission process. So it's not become a thing of meritocracy. Rather, it's become a thing of like an animal kingdom, the strongest animal survive and how to do it. That is not, what it, that is not how it is done. In any case, it must be known that the professional law education, it's only a continuation of what we do from the LLB. And the LLB is what qualifies a lawyer to be learned. When we say people are learned, it means that they've read and they've gone through the academic rigors of education. The, the law school, which is the professional level, is apprenticeship. Okay? That is why in the past you have people without LLB, yet they are able to assess the professional law education. Which means that if that is anything to reason with, it means that we have to expand that space and give room for apprenticeship, okay? Give room for apprenticeship. Once the person has gone through the LLB, which is academic work, it should be easy to continue. Where they can put strong stops or checks on would be the qualification entry to join the bar. And that is what is done in America, that is what is done in other jurisdictions. So that the legal education is not cut off. I don't think that any country should pride itself in training its it's uh, uh, citizenry mm. to have half education. Because as it stands, if you finish the LLB, you are not yet a lawyer, and you have not finished your law education. So why don't it flow to finish up to the professional level, then the examination comes in before the call to the bar, okay? And even I've said again in that book that we have to prescribe solutions to peculiar problems. Why don't you bring in strong apprenticeship? Why? Whilst people practice from the lower courts, 
So for instance, you finish the LLP, you continue to the professional level, you pass out, and then you are first called to practice at the lower court. And that is where we have a lot of problems. That is where we read in the news, somebody has stolen a chicken and he's been thrown into prison for five years. Because that person was not represented in court. Mm. Okay? So if you go through these systems of people upgrading to practice in the higher court, unlike what we see now, we are going to strengthen the practice at the lower base, okay. where they will be mentored by senior lawyers. They do a number of cases at the lower court, and then you are posted, just like national service. I, I see you are posted po through the, the yeah. country right. to, to serve, so that we know that in all the 16 regions, we have fair representation of law students who have adequate knowledge of the basis of the law. Okay, then. But beyond you that... You start through that number of years mm. under a senior lawyer, then you come to write an examination which qualifies you to practice at the higher court Okay, level. So, so this you, is you what I want us to address our minds to, uh, Niema, and, and I want to bring in Hassan at this point, the fact that, uh, in all fairness, the General Legal Council works um, with the IEC, the Independent Commission, or the committee, I should say, in terms of examination um, when it comes to the entrance... Um, exams for the law school. So if that's the setup for this law school admission process, where do we lay the blame? Uh, do we find a way of robbing in the General Legal Council or let's try and situate this within the scope of those organizing the examination? I think um, whether I like it or not, I see them as the administrators or overseers when it comes to some of these decision making. They cannot, in one or the other, say they are not privy to. And to set on concern indirectly would mean that you approve of whatever is going on. Now, the question is, 2018 it happened. July this year it happened. What have they done about it? Why is the GLC quiet about it? Is it because it favors them? Is it because they could go behind us and draw 10 people in without writing the exams? So we think if they want to really run a fair and, and a, a system which has the integrity it deserves, then we need to put in Yeah, but, but whenever you bring pressure. that point up, that there are some lawyers within the system who con I mean, contest that what, what you're putting out, that the fact that the um, admission process is as rigorous as you can find it uh, anywhere else in the world. So can, can, can that, whoever challenges me, justify how the 10 got in? Maybe we should start, we should start talking about that. How did the 10 that they claim themselves, I didn't do it, I read the report, went in without writing an exam. What is rigorous here? So for me, I think it begins with them. Unless otherwise they don't see anything wrong with the 10, then they can talk about rigorous. So if 2,600, 2,600 plus are sitting for this exam, obviously they would do anything to go through. As long as this system, as it says, it's unfair. I have set time with that number that this particular exam and the requirements thereof is not something that we can confidently say mm. an examination. It is a selection. Because so what, the what should happen then? Do we take a look at um, scrapping everything, starting afresh? My what do you suggest? My first interview, I think a year or two ago, at Joy Prime, I said something, and I still stand by it. Square pets can never be put in a round hole. It would not work. And I still stand by it. Because the place of a lawyer or a judge is to adjudicate and not to educate. So whoever is manning the IEC is the person a legal educationist. I am so curious. If we don't find, if we think it's all about legal education, I have always said, we can have the GLC, have something like maybe the Ministry of Education, sitting as an examining body, but consulting GLC on the right thing to do in setting these exams. Even WIAC itself is failing. How much more are easy? So for me, I think, one, we need the political will to change or make up our minds that we want to open up legal education. If we are not going to do this, we'll come here every year to discuss some of these injustices and some of these unfair things that keep happening. We've been talking about it, and it's, it's, this is not something that we, are, we disagree that it's unreasonable. We know it's problematic. Right. We have the men, as we put it, to resolve some of these problems. Why do we have to come here year in, year out, and talk about the same thing? So for us, we think this problem can be solved. We should find a way to resolve this 
ASAP. And that is what we're calling for the expansion of legal education. Now, the last time we talked about this, they took us to the law village to say that they were building whatever. And they, show, they showed us articulators and what, what not. Mm. Right after, the place has started growing. There's no activity there. Gaslighting us always. Who are we deceiving? These are our children. This is the future of Ghanaians. So we didn't frustrate them. All of us cannot sit at the GLC. That is why people are appointed to take reasonable decisions. That will favor everybody here, every student. So for me, I think we should sit up, get the right thing done, and those in there who are misbehaving should be fired. We should see something to the extent that it's been investigated. We realize that Mr. ABC was involved, therefore they've been fired. We are satisfied with some of these things. But by and large, I don't think the IEC is competent or has the capacity to run legal education examination. Mm. And it should be scrapped. Anyway, uh, we'll see about that. We need to go. But Niyama, um, for you, uh, we also do have the Attorney General and the Minister for Justice. Your brief words on your expectation uh, from his outfit on solving this, some of these challenges. From the Attorney General and the Minister of Justice to the President. Because, I mean, the President is a lawyer, as we know. I mean, that is his profession. We, today, we can point Professor Mills to the expansion of the law faculty in the University of Ghana. We can point him to the high court complex. We want to point our president today to some. The problem we have today is legal education, the expansion of professional legal education. I want him to be firm, to take that leadership decision to say that he's solving this problem because that is the profession, that is his profession. It must be very dear to his heart. If we will count him for something, if nothing at all, we want to count him to have been the man who solved professional legal education. Anything short of that is a big failure for having a president who is a lawyer who is not able to solve the problem of professional legal education. Anyway, we'll see about that if uh, indeed your appeal will uh, do anything uh, about this. Uh, but I'm grateful. That's uh, Niamh D, member of the Centre for Social uh, Justice. Um, also, uh, Hassan Asari uh, is president of the National Association uh, for Law Students. Uh,